Here's something that I am going to miss about not having my mother here. And with that said, I miss it, but I have to remember that even that could go wrong. So I'm not going to miss the chance that I'm taking where it, uh, it could just ruin my day. I love fabric, love it. My mother was very crafty and she loves all these things. So I showed her like almost every bit of fabric that ever came into this apartment, into the house. I was always showing her what I ordered. And not only because I wanted her to see something that she thought was pretty, but mostly because I wanted to somehow please her and say, look ma, look what I do. And hopefully that would make me good enough, you know? But I never got that from her. My mother was completely disconnected from my careers. Um, barely could explain to anyone what I did. But she liked to look at the fabric and we did have that in common. Now if I showed it to her just as fabric and didn't talk about my business, that went good. But if I ever said something like, oh, I know this one's gonna sell, that was like putting a little reminder in her head that I have a business doing something that I love very, very much and that didn't always fly with her. That could put her into a downward spiral of narcissistic rage. So I had to be very careful with my words. Another thing I'm going to miss is like when I sell something on eBay and it, you know, I would show her and say, look, I have this or I have this tote bag. And I would like to tell her how much it sold for because again, I think it's an attempt at, look, mom, you know, I, I'm successful in certain ways, in many ways, but that didn't go over that great either. She would, you know, say, oh, that's wonderful, that's awesome, but now she was remembering in her head, if she wants to hurt me later, she can say something negative about that thing. When a narcissist knows that there's some things that make you excited or happy, those are the things that they will try to destroy for you so that you can be miserable, because they'd rather have you be miserable. And the quilt that I'm working on for the, the crumb, crumb With Me, uh, that's going to be the first quilt that I start that she has seen a couple pieces of that she won't see the finished product. And it's like, it, why, why? When she was in the nursing home for six and a half months in Maine, I didn't show her my stuff. Did I ever bring something? I knew she wasn't seeing things, but I also knew she was still alive. So I guess there wasn't as much urgency. And I don't know if I brought anything to show her. I think I might have just to try to, you know, get her, her stamp of approval that I did something good. But, you know, we also had COVID going on. So there were times that I couldn't even go see her. So anyway, that, that's just something that is hard for me right now. Uh, fabric coming in, not being able to show her, stuff going out, not being able to show her. And, yeah. and here's some of the ways that she could turn that around. Like I might show her some fabric, you know, beautiful prints. Look at the prints. My, oh, those are so beautiful. And what are you going to do with those now? I mean, she knew very well what I was going to do. She knew that I was selling fabric. I mean, it's... And, you know, I'd say, well, I'm going to sell them. And she says, oh, people still buy that stuff from you? It's like, uh, you know, she always could just change it anytime she wanted to. You know, one night we were sitting, uh, she was in her chair, and I was actually laying on her bed uh, just to, uh, you know, we might have been watching like uh, one of the few shows that I watch, a reality or whatever. I think it might have been Big Brother at that time. And so I would just lay down for a little bit, but then I'd always get up during the commercials to go do some work. And uh, we're just sitting there, silent. And she said, how much money do you have in the bank? And I tell her, that was it. She didn't say a thing. She didn't bat an eye. <laughs> it's, like, it's no, wow, you've really done a good job. None of that. And I almost think it was 
a test because I'm very open with my mother, even though I know I'm always taking chances when I would talk with her, I would talk and tell her things. I had nobody else to talk to. So I would tell her and she knew I would tell her, you know, this, this, that, that. And um, I don't know if she might have been testing me just to see if was I going to say the same thing? Or was I going to be off by a lot? And then she'd say, oh yeah, so she lied to me before. I don't know. It's just these things that I'll, I'll never really understand. But uh, yeah, so there are things that I will miss. I will miss, uh, you know, trying to get her stamp of approval. <laughs> Which I should know after all this time that was never going to happen, you know. Um, and I don't really feel like showing other people. It's not like fun to say to Derek, oh, look, look what I, you know, he doesn't give a shit. And it isn't about that. It isn't that I have to show it to people. It's that I, I just wanted her to give me a little bit of praise or, you know, just get it through her head that, you know, that I, I was, you know, making a living. I, I thought that would bring her comfort somehow, but it didn't seem to. But anyway, and I was just trying to make her happy. I was just trying to make her happy with the little things that I could make her happy with, like, you know, giving her spaghetti anytime she wanted it and, you know, feeding her, you know, several hundred pounds of sugar. <laughs> so I did what I could. And um, anyway, I just wanted to talk about that for a minute because I was kind of like going through that as I was sitting here.